Hi everybody! Welcome or welcome back to Mel Did It Herself. Today we have a makeover, a custom piece that I did on this vintage high boy dresser. It's about 100 years old, the um, client estimated, and it was in pretty good shape. You can take a look here. But she was looking for a change in the color to match her um, home. So I started out by taking all the hardware pieces off. The top drawers um, just had little knobs and then the other ones were a pull that had a face plate that was um, kind of like nailed into the drawer there. So if you ever come across ones like these, I just grabbed some needle nose pliers and gently grabbed the nail and just kind of like wiggled it out and it seemed to work. They weren't in there too, too tight. So I was just mindful of not scratching the top of the nail as much as I could um, because you'll be able to see that when I put it back on because I'm not doing anything to this hardware. Then I went and started the cleaning process, grabbing TSP and some shop rags and just thoroughly soaked the whole thing and rubbed it down really well a couple of times because as you can see, I got a lot of grime off of this piece. I always like to show how much comes off of them because um, it just reiterates how important it is to do the cleaning process and not skip it. So after that, I wiped it down with just some water and let it dry so I got rid of any of the leftover TSP solution. And then I'm going in with a sander. I'm not using my orbital sander because I just wanted to lightly scuff sand the surface and get rid of any sort of shine. Once it was all dried here, you can see it's nicely scuff sanded. And then I'm using Annie Sloan chalk paint in the color Chicago Gray on this piece. I like to water down my Annie Sloan paint when I use it because it's super thick and um, it just gives her a nicer finish, I find. So I just have a misting bottle that I spray kind of on the piece and or on my paintbrush intermittently. But you can see here, this is what it was looking like after the first coat. And I just take some time and some natural light after this to see if there's any sort of gouges in the wood that need to be filled with wood filler. Once you get a coat of paint on it, sometimes it's easier to kind of notice those spots. So you can see here, there's a couple kind of surface ones that would get filled in by the next coat of paint. But there was a couple slight spots right there um, that I did end up filling and then sanding down after it was dry before going ahead and doing the second coat. So I did about, I'd say about three to four coats on most parts of this piece. It was very dark, so um, I'm going in with a lighter piece and I didn't prime it, so that's why it took so many layers and I was watering down my paint. I didn't film a whole lot of the painting process, but you can see here for the details, I'm using my zebra round brush to kind of get into the nooks and crannies and I went back in with a more detailed brush afterwards for anything that I couldn't reach. And for the main, um, the rest of the drawers and the piece itself, I was going in with uh, my Zebra Palm Pro for the most part. Once I was done painting, I let it sit overnight just to be safe to make sure it was completely dried. And I came in the next day with some Annie Sloan clear wax and I applied that with a brush, let it sit for a while and then came back with a shop rag and buffed that in. And this is how it was looking following that. Kind of bad lighting, but I do a lot of my work in the evening, so it is what it is. And following this, I did go back and do a second coat of wax just to make sure it was an even finish and it was going to be nicely protected. And then I let it sit for a couple of days to cure before giving it back to the client. And a little kind of extra touch that I like to do is adding in this Dixie Belle Big Mama's Butter. This is the scent um, Orange Grove. And it's essentially an oil-based salve um, to help restore the look of kind of old or dried out wood. So you can see here how it's just really making it um, the wood look much more richer and more moisturized. So I usually do this on the outsides and the inside sides of the drawers. Um, I don't do it on the bottoms of the drawers typically just because um, 
even though I wipe away any excess, I don't want the oils to get on, for example, people, people's like clothes if they're using this as a clothing dresser, which presumably they are. Um, but it gives it a really nice scent and kind of restores the look of old wood. Like I said, this is about a hundred years old, so it definitely could use a little bit of moisture. And I think it's a nice touch um, on pieces and it gives it a, a really nice scent, like I said. It kind of reminds me of the smell of um, like Goo Gone, but not too overwhelming. Like the longer it sits, the scent obviously fades a bit, so I find it really nice. And once I got the piece back together, it was time to put the hardware back on. We did a little bit of a reshuffle um, because one of the back plates was missing um, initially when the client dropped it off and they wanted to keep the original hardware, which um, I think is a great idea because I think it's a cool piece and kind of keeps that old touch um, true to the, the piece. So you can see on that second drawer, we just removed the back plate um, on the other one just to kind of make sure, you know, there wasn't just one missing to make it look missing. But as I was putting it on, I noticed that one of the backplate options had a little bit of a kind of a, you can see that cut, or I don't know if it was just made different than the other ones, but you can see that straight line versus being the rounded out circle of the other one. So I was initially putting that first one on and then I noticed it, checked the other one and it was a full circle. So I opted to put that one on instead. So. Putting the hardware back on is a good opportunity to take a close-up look up on your piece too. If you see any imperfections, you can kind of get those buffed out. Okay, so just a reminder of what we started with, with this vintage high boy dresser, beautiful piece. And this is what we turned it into. I'm very happy with how this piece turned out and most importantly, the client was as well. I love the contrast of the gray with the wood um, on the drawers. I think it looks really classy and classic. And this was the first time I used this color of Chicago Gray by Annie Sloan. And I was pleasantly surprised and I have some left over. So I'll definitely be utilizing that for a future project, whether on its own or mixing it with another color, because it's a nice kind of neutral gray. Um, so I think that will be really useful um, for future projects. So if you're still here, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, I encourage you to subscribe below. If you aren't following me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is Mel Did It Herself, and I show a lot of behind the scenes and makeovers that I don't always make a video for on there. So if you're interested in more of this content, visit me there. And thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time. Have a great day.